Well, hi, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wassman, and today we are going to be looking at how to multiply with fractions by exploring the amount of sugar that are in common drinks. We are in our home links, Unit 7, Lesson 2. Let's take a look at the instructions. It says, use the information in the table to solve the number stories. In the space below each problem, use pictures or equations to show what you did to find your answers. So as you can see here, we have uh, four different drinks listed and the amount of sugar uh, that you would find within that drink in cups according to their serving size. With all the serving sizes being the same, 12 ounces, you can notice that uh, most of the, uh, the drinks contain about a quarter cup of sugar. Okay. Now, if you remember when we talked about units of measure, uh, a quarter cup looks like this thing right here, which is a fraction of a cup, represented as a pie or a fraction circle, one-fourth or a quarter uh, would look something like this, okay? So when we are thinking about the sugar in drinks, uh, looking at problem number one, it says Carmen drinks one 12 ounce can of orange soda every day. How much sugar is that in one week? Okay, so if Carmen drinks one can of orange soda every day, how much sugar is that in one week? Okay, now this basically is a problem where we're asked to multiply the amount of sugar times seven, because of course there are seven days in one week. So what I would need to do is I would have to multiply 7 times 1 fourth. Now what would that look like? Well, as you can see here, I just copied and pasted uh, an image of the uh, circle fraction of 1 fourth. And if I was multiplying 1 fourth times 7, then I would have seven-fourths all together like so. So when I multiply a fraction, just like I did when I added fractions in Unit 5, uh, all I needed to do is look at the numerator, okay? So when I'm multiplying seven times one-fourth, I'm basically multiplying seven times one because the fourth part is just identifying the unit or the item that I'm counting, okay? So, as you recall, multiplication is simply repeated addition. So when I look at seven one-fourths, I'm basically just coming to look at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Seven fourths. So again, the only thing that changes is the numerator. Now, what is seven fourths cup of sugar? Well, seven fourths is what we call an improper fraction, which again you probably remember from Unit Five. And mathematically, an improper fraction is a correct answer, but a more practical or common way to represent this is as a mixed number. So how much is 7 fourths? Well, for every 4 fourths, we have 1 whole. So if I've collected 4 fourths already, that's the equivalent of 1 whole. So now when I look at the uh, leftover fourths, I see that I have 3 fourths right here. One, two, three. So that makes my total one whole and three fourths. As you can see, how I've just digitally inserted these two new graphics at the top one whole, or four fourths, and then here's three fourths, all gathered together in a uh, convenient package. Those are my seven fourths, just reimagined or uh, 
re-represented as a mixed number. Okay. So how many cups of sugar would Carmen consume in one week if she drank seven sodas a day? Well, that would be the equivalent of seven-fourths of a cup which is the same as saying one and three-fourths cup of sugar. So friends, what that tells us here is that when we are multiplying by a fraction, the number we have to really be thinking about is the numerator. I know the temptation might be to try to multiply the numerator by seven and then the denominator by seven, but that is not the case. Again, Multiplication is repeated addition. So if I'm multiplying 1 fourth times 7, I'm just adding 7 groups of 1 fourth together. That's pretty much it. I'll let you guys try problem 2 and 3 on your own, because again, you're just applying the same formula. So if you drank a, a glass of cranberry juice every morning, what would be your total over two weeks? Well, if there's seven days in one week, you would just be multiplying one-fourth times 14. Okay. Mike drinks three 12-ounce servings of sweet tea per day. How much sugar is he drinking in his tea in one day? Okay. Well, again, you'd have to consult the table. Sweet tea is slightly better for you because it only contains a sixth of a cup. So again, you would be multiplying... 3 times 1 sixth, and then multiplying that by 5 days. Okay, but I, I am confident that you'll be able to solve that on your own. Okay. Then lastly, down here at the bottom, we have a throwback from uh, previous units where we're multiplying large numbers. So let's try one of these problems and use uh, one of our three strategies that we learned. Um, partial products. Uh, lattice or partitioning rectangles. I'm going to try problem number four just for fun. 951 times four. And I think this time I'm going to use partitioning rectangles. So I'm going to draw a rectangle, split it into three parts by creating two partitions. And I'm going to remember that 951 is the same as saying nine hundreds plus five tens plus one one nine hundred fifty one. I'm going to multiply each of those by four. Well, I remember that nine times four is thirty six. So nine times four is thirty six, and I'm just going to add in those two zeros because nine hundred is just nine with two zeros behind it. Five times four is twenty. So five ten times four is going to be twenty tens, otherwise known as two hundred. And of course, four times one is four. And then I'm going to take those three partial products, even though I'm using partitioning rectangles. 3,600, 200, and 4. I'm going to add all three of those mounts together. And that's going to give me a grand total of 3,804. And that is my product, 3,804. You have questions? This uh, multiplication of fractions piece a little confusing? Well, you need to ask your math teacher for help. Your math teacher is there to help you. They might be showing you this video as a part of their lesson, but uh, they are the experts, okay? Uh, in these times of virtual learning and uh, distance learning and all that, uh, we teachers try to use as many resources as we can find possible to uh, make our lives easier. So. Uh, if your teacher is using this video as a part of their lesson, that's not to say that they don't know what they're talking about. They just uh, didn't want to reinvent the wheel, right? So talk to your teachers. They will ha be happy to help you with your work. Okay. I hope this video was helpful to you. Uh, until we talk again, friends, have a good day. Thanks.